Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo, Castle Myers Twilight Edition, where there's no need to be afraid at the fact that, you know, our foxes are very busy sniffing at random blood splattered all over their exhibit. <laughs> This is just a completely normal incident. No one needs to be afraid. And at the very least, I have finally gotten it to the point where we no longer have to worry about giant piles of, like, meat and other gore just stacked on the ground. Now it's going to be hidden behind the autumnal leaves. Oh, hey! Speaking of things that are hidden, there's a bunch of foxgloves hiding in there. I, I think not. I want to go ahead and, like, hide inside of this amazing house. But all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome back with Castle Myers looming up in the distant night skies. We are carrying on with the challenge of getting used to all of the new animals in the Twilight Pack, as well as trying to revive this area and make it a viable place for all of our animals to be able to survive and enjoy. Also, what are you so upset about, ma'am? It will take too long to get served at Coffee Fox Street Counter number one. <gasps> Ooh, do I ever have good news for her? All right, so last time, oh my gosh, are those all people? I thought these were people waiting for the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, that startled me. So last time we went ahead and we had some fox cubs who were starting to learn a lot more about. And now the fox cubs have actually already grown up. I didn't even have time to process that, but equestrian has grown up. How many of them? Oh my gosh, almost all of them are in here. Oh, that's so funny. <gasps> we need to show people what the den is like. Of course. I don't know why I didn't think of, I don't know why I didn't, didn't think of that? Okay, look, I tried really hard to make that a good pun for you. I, I put a lot of effort into it. Please clap. <laughs> okay, so we do have a Habitat web camera, um, and I think we can actually display if I put it in the right place. Do I have like a fence post I could just copy or just like put up? In fact, oh, there's an idea. I wonder if I can grab the barriers. And can I just put like some wooden logs? Oh, I can't, okay. Man, it would be nice if you could do like half and half of the different types of fences. I never thought about that before, but that would be really cool. Um, Let's see, maybe there's some sort of barricade I could copy over here. Look at these cool, like, oh, this is, oh no. My fruit bats. <laughs> What's wrong with them? The cleanliness of the fruit pack exhibit has reached critical levels. Oh no! Hang in there, little ones! Okay, so keeper is assigned. I think we need to get a new fruit bat specialist because uh, actually going batty for the fruit bats is going to be what is going to save our zoo. Uh, I'll explain myself in just a little bit here, but let's get a new keeper. And this is actually going to be a keeper. Let me grab him. All right. So this is actually going to be Keeper Colleen. And Colleen, I think you're you're a male in this version of your like existence, but that's totally fine. So this is going to be Bat Expert Colleen. There we go. And what we're gonna do is we are going to assign Bat Expert Colleen to just the bat zone. Wow, there's a lot of things to take care of with this exhibit. Um, and the bat zone is going to include like these things. Ooh, I'm gonna need to like include some of this as well. Interesting. All right. And eventually we'll we'll move bat zone. But bat keeper Colleen is gonna or is bat expert, pardon me. Colleen is going to work the bat zone and keep it really nice and tidy. We'll go ahead and spend a little bit of money on training them because the bats are going to be what saves us. <laughs> Let me go ahead and explain myself whilst we actually look at some of these amazing bats. Whoops, let me pop over here. Oh my gosh, and look at look at this guy! A gold quality Egyptian fruit bat already! That is amazing! Look at him fly! <laughs> oh, but yes, so we actually are really struggling when it comes to money. And I'm thinking one of the best things we can do is our old trick of actually working with exhibit species, like said fruit bats, which seem to be breeding pretty quickly for us, which is wonderful. Oh, look at him go, look at him go, I'm so proud. <laughs> and these guys actually are really fantastic. Let's go ahead and this fruit bat, who we're gonna rename, 
to Tristan. Oh, Tristan, I hope you're having just a wonderful time going ahead and experimenting with what it's like to play with all of the Twilight animals. But Tristan, we tossed into the exhibit storage just for a second so we can see how he is worth $1,600 or some actual release to the wild points for once, which normally doesn't happen with the exhibit species. So that makes me very excited. Uh, yeah, we're going to try to get as many of those gold quality bats as possible, which means we need to do a little bit of finagling when it comes to which of our bats can breed. I'm going to let all of the females breed, but I'm going to take Domel, Addison, and Roth off of breeding. And then I'm also going to name a few of them after you guys, like Alan. Oh, Alan, I'm so glad that you're glad that it's back. And I'm going to use your last name of Ruffy because I think that's pretty cool. Are you young adult infertile? Okay, I wonder how long it takes before they become ready to breed. And then let's go ahead and we're going to grab, let's see, oh, Blue Fox. Oh my gosh, There's. it's just so fun how many of you guys. Oh yes, and now Aaron has had offspring again. Oh, that's wonderful. I wonder, can I actually see who was just born if I like pop away for a second? And then, oh, this is the brand new one, another female, a wonderful, uh, Wonderful silver quality female. We're going to name her Blue Fox. Gosh, I hope it's obvious like which ones we've named before and which ones we haven't. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's see. And then we'll go for Cassandra. There we go. And then Isabel. Let's see. So Isabel, Isabella, pardon me. Oh, I'm so excited because these are the ones, these are the ones who are going to like help save our entire zoo. And I think, have I renamed? I don't know if Domel had his name renamed and Trisden did. Okay, so I'm going to assume, okay, I'm, I'm caught up. I am waiting and we are ready for more bat action. So the thing that I'm really wondering though is why do we not have anybody donating for these bats or even stopping to to read about them, to look at them. They're amazing. They're ridiculously amazing. And I can't tell, do we need like an exhibit? There we go. So we have an exhibit information board for them. Can you use a habitat education board for them? Can you use either? Cause I feel like they should, no, you cannot. So they count as exhibit species. So let's put a few spots down for people to maybe learn a little bit more about them. And I wonder if we have the walls back up, will that make people stop and look? I don't know if that's the case, but I feel like we should try. <laughs> Cause it's like, come on guys, look around you. This is kind of amazing. There's something, there's something terribly wrong with your curiosity and your sense of wonder in the world if you don't look around here and just go, wow, this is so fantastic. All right, look, and now we, we have the speaker. Okay, uh, the squeaks of uh, fruity bats. Or no, 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 okay, well, actually, we need to make an animal talk and we're gonna have to say talking about fruit bats because my beloved husband, Chips, has so many jokes. Anytime I tell him I'm going to be recording something now, he's like talking about X or Y because uh, he, he just thinks the bug snacks thing is so funny. All right, come on, people. Here, maybe if we go ahead and we move the donation bins to the exterior parts, will that count? Can they just not donate when they're like immediately inside? We'll find out. And then there's some litter we need to deal with over here too. Come on, come on in. Donate, learn, be educated, be be in awe of our bats. And at the very least, at least our bats can go ahead and try to reproduce in a way that will stay ahead of um, stay ahead of us running out of money. Which actually reminds me, I think, are, did you steal something? Dang it, I think I have pickpockets because people suspiciously running away fast usually means pickpockets. <laughs> But I think we need to go ahead and uh, also add in a few more like exhibit species that breed pretty quickly 
So I was actually thinking of installing an exhibit species like in this, this coffee joint that has fallen down. Or even over here, look, this part would be perfect because I wanna see if you can do the null exhibits, which are where you make all of the, the walls and the windows like disappear for other exhibits as well. So like, here's the walkthrough exhibit. It's not even called the bad exhibit. You know that it is going to be full of other animals than just these guys. Wait a second, like what can you put in here? Hold up. Okay, okay, I'm gonna have to undo that. Wait, what kind of exhibit animals can you put in there? Like, is it just bats? We need more money so that we can experiment with this. Oh, I love the challenge of like, oh, we really need more cash. Uh, all right, this is gonna be a little expensive though. <laughs> Am I really gonna do this? I'm really gonna do this. Um, Cause I think it's going to help out with making money in the long run. So we'll put this right here and then Let's go ahead and request an exhibit animal. Well, let's figure out view animal market. Mm. So we have the common death adder. Oh, there's more Egyptian fruit bats. Oh, I need to get some of those conservation credits because then we could start getting more gold qualities in here. The giant burrowing cockroaches. Oh, and then we've got like the Mexican. Oh, we could do, I think maybe giant burrowing cockroaches would be perfect right now. So I'm gonna grab a male and a female. Whoops, I should have gotten a more fertile male than that, but we'll see what happens. And then if I put them in here, can I? Okay, first things first, why is it set to 102 as like the default? That is ridiculous. All right, let's make it more humid. Let's make it less the, the literal heat of death and de like doom. Let's see, a little more. Oh, I love this new humidity set that you can have. Okay, so there we go. And then we're just gonna call this Creepy Crawlies. And what can I do for the customization? So can I make it so that it just goes poof? Okay, there's that facade. Can I make it null? Or is that just the other one? 2D facade. Gosh darn. Okay, so I don't think I can make this one just disappear the way I was hoping. Because you can do 3D or, yeah, you could do those. And you can also close the windows. Interesting. All right, so that wasn't quite what I was going. Creepy crawlies. All right, are these guys gonna be okay? This is so fascinating. It's like people don't even see the exhibits are they busted i've got two little cockroaches in here how could you not want to come see um let's see uh <clears throat> how could you not want to come see koneko so a little kitten and how could you not want to come see sea bunny <laughs> oh excuse me sea bunny you want somebody named overcast or rain so we're gonna go overcast with this little guy and look they're gonna help out in making the big bucks too because hopefully them being here will inspire people to like stop and stare wow i wonder if that's just gonna be a problem we have with people not wanting to look at the exhibits right now all right, maybe that's a clue that we need to start working on some more of the habitat species. And let's come in, giant burrowing cockroach. I'm hoping we'll get a little bit of TLC for these poor guys. All right, is anyone donating anything? But no one's donating anything right now. Mega concerned, friends. I am mega concerned. Like normally people will start veering off and like staring at the exhibits really early, so. Eep. We'll have to see. <laughs> okay, if that's not gonna work, I guess we need to like wiggle over here and we need to really give some thought to putting in, oh, and this thing's falling apart. Let's call it mechanic. Putting in the raccoons to this exhibit. Oh my goodness. It's so cute. And I, I'm a little, oh, what's this? Oh, that clipboard is so cool. I love that as a detail. I wonder when that started showing up. All right, so maybe we do need to focus on raccoons because if we're not going to be able to get anybody to pay attention, 
right now to our exhibit species. Kind of concerned about that. But maybe they'll pay attention to the raccoons. So let's go ahead and adopt ourselves a female and then a pretty healthy male, if you don't mind. This one should do. And then we'll get these two plopped in here. There we go. And they're probably going to try to escape. <laughs> let's let's attempt to... Whoa! Alright. Great work so far. The zoo looks much improved. We're well on the way to making this a dream sanctuary for every animal who calls it home. Speaking of which, we need home for a bear. The Himalayan brown bear, to be precise, is a subspecies of the brown bear. A very endangered subspecies, sadly. This particular bear was rescued from a trust fund 20-something with more money than cents and out-of-date permits. The news has caused a stir, and there's even a reporter here. While I handle that, you find a home for the bear and continue with improvements to the zoo. And yes, I did lie about the Welsh cake. Sorry about that. Oh my gosh! Oh, we got the little statue for the, the raccoon! Very exciting! Very exciting! Uh, there we go. Needed to make that climb proof ASAP. <laughs> And now we have Kelly, a really healthy, beautiful Himalayan brown bear, uh, who is ready to go ahead and be added in any second. And there's actually a reporter breathing down our neck, waiting for something to happen about that. Um, and I think there's now a raccoon in here. Hello? Oh, there's two raccoons. <gasps> you guys, they're going to need more space. Okay, so that's going to need to be something we work on. I'm really starting to run low on money because I've been spending it left, right, and center. We might have to sell some of our fruit bats in just a little bit here. But welcome to our little raccoons! Who I can actually see. Sorry about that little one. Thanks to the extremely bright light that I can turn on in this twilight world of ours. Oh, how fun! I really want them to have a wonderful exhibit, so we're going to need to give them more space when we can. And I wonder what kind of enrichment items I can give them at the moment. All right, so raccoon. Man, if my plan for getting a lot of money from having a bunch of really high quality exhibits doesn't work, I'm gonna be in a little bit of trouble, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, so, oh, an interspecies bonus? Pardon? Oh, this cute slow feeder we absolutely have to do. All right, so they're happy for food enrichment now. Um, and then they they like to climb, and they like to have toys. Oh my gosh, a little sprinkler would be so cute just to watch them play in. All right, does that count? That counts a little bit as a toy. And then maybe a block of ice. Okay. Oh my gosh, and Francesca's having more babies. Oh good, and now all of the organ meat and the other gory, like, awful has been put into a pile out of the way for our foxes. But that does mean that we're going to need to have a little bit of space for our foxes after she finishes, you know, stuffing her, her wonderful little mouth on all of these <laughs> very bloody ribs. There you go, Francesca. She's about to have more babies. Oh boy. That means we're probably going to need to figure out what to do with her previous litter. Is she gonna go into... Where are you gonna go to have them this time, Francesca? Outside? I'm ready. I'm ready and I have... Oh, is she going to go in the burrow again? <gasps> I think she is! Oh! You guys! We're going back into the burrow to welcome the next... the next litter of red foxes, I think. Unless she just, like, noped out of there. All right, come on, Francesca. Any minute now. Hmm. <gasps> there they are! <laughs> we have one baby fox cub, two baby fox cubs. Oh, I had no idea. It would be so exciting watching them be born from inside the animal burrow cam. Three baby fox cubs! Another set of three from our wonderful Francesca, adding to our red fox family. That is fantastic. 
holy moly, we also need to figure out how to start making more money to take care of all these guys. Wow. Oh, there we go, you guys. All right, and we have two, let's see, three somewhere new little ones. This is so cool. Apparently the burrows actually have a, a capacity amount, which I didn't know either. If you guys could, do please leave a like for our adorable little fox cubs and the fact that they're a new members of the family. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.